Hi, thank you for joining me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flojo, on another Copilot Studio video. Today, we're going to be looking at generative answers and how we can reduce the amount of text that comes back from a request. So if you don't know what generative answers are, basically, it allows you to point at a website, a document, or something like that, so when a user asks a question that you do not have a topic for, it will go away and get information from wherever you've pointed it to, generate a response and deliver it back to the user. However, you can also do this in manual topics using the generative answers node. So when you actually get a generative answer response back, it could be fairly lengthy. Now let's say you're working with a client or you're working with a team or something like that, or you yourself as a person creating a co-pilot decide that you don't want that amount of text to be delivered to the user simply because it causes too much issues with scrolling. If they ask too many questions, they get delivered uh, so much text that they have to scroll, scroll, scroll up and down. It all depends on what you want for your customer. So the end user may not want to have so much information delivered to them. So how do we reduce this? How do we reduce the character count on a generative answer. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but firstly, let's take a look at what we've got so far. On your screen, you can see I'm in a topic called example. I've got a test phrase of test, so this, whenever I type test in here, it's going to trigger this topic. Then it simply asks a question, what do you want to ask? And then it will save the user response, and then it will pass the user response into the generative answers node, this is what I mentioned previously. You can have a generative answers node in a manual topic. So you can actually use generative AI in manual topics too. You don't just need to have it outside of that in a system topic. And I am then pointing to flowjo.io. Now flowjo.io is my blog and it's gonna gather information from that and then generate a response and return it to the user. Now, here is an example of what I've already done. So you've got, hello, I'm flowjo.io copilot. Uh, this is a previous copilot I've made on another video. You can look at how I've actually created that on the uh, build a copilot for your website video on my channel. Um, I've typed test and then it's said, what do you want to ask? This is the question. And I've put, how do I format dates in Power Automate? So I'm gonna copy that because we're gonna use this um, as an example and I'm just going to save that over here. And then what we've got is a response. And you can see this response is quite large, right? So let's copy this and see how large this response is. So if I come over to this character counter, it's just a website that counts uh, characters. So I'm gonna paste it into here. You can see that I've got 1,375 characters and it's 226 words over 23 lines. Now, 23 lines in a small window is quite a lot. So it's a lot of scrolling. As you can see when I was on here, like if I, if I get delivered this, I'm at the bottom, I have to scroll up and then I get it and then I'm scrolling down. If I ask another question that's, uh, and get another response just as long and then I want to go back up to the first response, it adds lots and lots of scrolling. And that might not be what your customer wants, that might not be what you want. So how do you change this for your end user? Well, if you see these three dots over here on the node, you can click properties, and in here you have your data source, your content moderation, but you have this thing called custom instructions now. Now this is where you do your prompt engineering. You could say something like, um, give me it back in 500 characters. But that's pretty ambiguous, right? So let's see what happens when we do that. Let's do save and we'll do exactly the same test. So I'll copy the question that we asked previously. I'll hit refresh. We'll type test. Now we've got the what do you want to ask? So I'm going to ask exactly the same thing and let's see what we get back. So as you can see here, we've got quite a lot of text. It's reduced, but let's see what the character count limit is. So it's still over 500 characters. That's because the, re the request that we did in the uh, custom instructions, give me it back in 500 characters is not specific enough. You have to make sure 
that your prompt engineering is on point. And what I mean by that is you need to be specific on what you're requesting. So I usually use something like this. I say, summarize the response in no more than 500 characters. So I'm specifically saying I want to summarize the response. So I'm targeting exactly what I want the, the machine to look at. So the response, and I'm saying in no more than 500 characters, I'm being very specific about my request. So let's see what happens when we run this same test. I'll hit refresh. We'll ask all of the same questions. I'll type test here. We'll get our question back. And then in here, I will type exactly the same question. So let's see what it comes back with now. So now you can see it's even shorter. So I'll copy that. And as you can see, we are now under the 500 character limit. Now, this is very important to understand. Firstly, what we did was we asked it to reduce it to less than 500 characters, but we didn't specify that we want it to reduce the response. So it doesn't know exactly what we're requesting. We're being ambiguous. But when we change it to something like what we've done, let's open that up again so you can see, summarize the response in no more than 500 characters. Now I found that this, this here is key to working with Copilot Studio in custom instructions. Right now, this may change in the future as they modify this because this is in preview, but right now, summarize the response is key to getting it to do what you want it to do. So summarize the response in no more than 500 characters will allow you to reduce the amount of characters coming back. It will allow you to have the response summarized in those characters, as you can see here. You still have all of your references and you've now reduced the big wall of text that you had to a more digestible response that you can use in your copilot. So let's move on to the summary then. We want to be specific. We want to know exactly what we're trying to achieve and be specific about what our requests are. This will help us reduce our ambiguity. We don't want the computer thinking we're requesting something else. We want to, it to actually understand what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to use characters as well. This is because if you think of uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, then you know about character limits and it allows you to focus on specifically what you're trying to achieve. If you say a 500 character limit, it will then reduce the uh, types of words that are used so that you can actually achieve this and you can then have a consistent character limit across your uh, entire platform for your copilot rather than saying 500 words and that can span um, multiple characters in length. Then think about the user experience and then check that it works. Now, the reason why we think about the user experience is because we want to know how many characters we are comfortable with presenting to a user. And then obviously we're checking that that works for us. Uh, not only that it actually returns the amount of characters, but that the actual user experience using the characters that we've selected works as well. I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow, and I'll see you next time. Bye.